This one is for our virtual students. Oh, our virtual students are those that are doing our online classes. Now this student has a problem with why it is that when shadow falls on an object, it actually gets lighter as it moves away from the light. Let's take a look at that one. Well, let's just do a whole analysis of what happens in light and shadow. And let's begin with just a generic shape like a ball. You see here I have a diagram um, that's a ball and it has the light cast on it. And of course we have the shadow side and we have the cast shadow. And look at this. Sure enough, on the shadow side as the, as the um, light or the shadow moves away from the light, there's this little light. Where does that come from? Well, that's actually a reflected light. So, you know, it might be a good idea if you just remember or just memorize the parts of light and shadow. I'm going to guide you through that, and maybe that might change the way you look at the whole world uh, in your painting and in your drawing. So let's very just quickly take a look at how, how we might do that. And let's start with a ball, and I'll just um, I'll just do a, a quick little circle here to start with the ball. Now, so we have a shape. The next thing we have is a light source. Where is the light source? The light source could be anywhere. It could be up here going this way. It could be up here coming this way. It could be coming this way. It could be coming down from here or it could be coming from behind. The light source could be coming from just about anywhere. So the important thing is is to look for where the light source is and then look for how that is affecting the object. Now, to make it a little simpler to do this demonstration, uh, I'm going to assume that the light source is coming from right here, like it is here, so that we don't confuse things. So if the light source is coming from right here, what happens is a rounded object or a form um, as it moves out of light, it moves into shadow. And, and there's that little point there. You can see it on the moon, uh, especially uh, at night when there's a crescent moon. And the earth is blocking the sun. You can see that little place where uh, you can almost see um, the part that is, that is not the crescent. And that line of demarcation where the crescent moon is shaped is called the terminator. And so we use that term, terminator, to determine where the light, uh, where the light is no lo longer hitting the surface, but where the surface is going out, away from the light, and we call that, of course, shadow. And so in, if the light is source is about right here, then we can see from the, see from the diagram here that the, the terminator line, or where the, the shape turns away from the light, begins to go into shadow, that's the terminator line. So now we have light and shadow, but we have one more thing, and that is we have cast shadow. Because if the light comes towards the object, it hits the object, then the object blocks the light and causes a cast shadow. And that's the reason we call it cast shadow, because it's casting itself onto the surface. So anytime you have bright light, <coughs> and you have images that have form to them, you're going to have a light, a light side, you're going to have a shadow side, and most likely you're going to have a cast shadow somewhere. Now, so that's good to remember, to be able to look and define where is, the where is it not in shadow, where is it in shadow. So let's look at the shadow side first. What happens in the cast shadow? Now this is the cast shadow. And so what happens in the cast shadow, it usually is very dark. And so we'll just uh, do a very quick little demonstration here of a cast shadow. And when working from a, a still life, you will often have this cast shadow. Now what you'll find about the cast shadow is that as it moves away from the object, it actually, actually gets a little bit lighter. It has this kind of a soft fuzzy edge. So there's the cast shadow. Now 
on the subject itself, on the image itself, we have the form shot on it. If you know that, it's kind of like knowing your salt from your pepper uh, on your food. The, this is a form shot. This is the cast shadow. This is the form shadow. The form shadow is the shadow that's falling on the form or on the shape. And so we have the form shadow. Now what happens with the form shadow? Well, uh, I'll just uh, sort of indicate a little bit here that if we didn't have this surface around here, the form shadow would simply move gradually getting darker as it moves around. Now it, it is at this point that our student asks this question because what actually happens in the form shadow is that the surface, the light that's reflecting on the surface bounces back into the shadow and causes right here a reflected light. And that's that's the part that was confusing our student. Now let's get this a little bit more gradated here. Um, so we'll have, let's have this just a little bit darker. We have another thing that happens as uh, on, a, on a, an object that is round and well lit. We have another thing that happens in that shadow. We have a core shadow that pops out. A core shadow is this part right here just past that terminator. And it usually is a little darker. You know, usually, if you can, you can see this on uh, on things. You can see this on things around the house. If you shine, uh, if you set, say, uh, an orange on a counter, on, on a light colored counter, set an orange on a light co colored counter, shine a light on it, and then observe. And when you observe, you will see that there's a little bit darker area right in here that's called the core shadow. That core shadow is darker because as the light is bouncing from the surface it's bouncing in this part but it doesn't actually hit the area that's turned away from it. So uh, so that's that's the core shadow then and this is the reflected light. Now we have one more shadow down here that we are concerned about or that helps define what's going on and that's the occlusion shadow. Now the occlusion shadow is found between the object and the surface. That's where the light gets absolutely, or this is where the light absolutely, absolutely disappears. There is no light whatsoever in the occlusion shadow and you see it also gives you the effect that the object is sitting on the surface. So that's the occlusion shadow. So we've got the occlusion shadow, we've got the form shadow, we've got the core shadow, so you see, and we've got the cast shadow. Those are three or four major shadows that will make up anything that you want to make realistic. Now that's just on the shadow side. Now I'm going to, the shadow side is the one that ends up being most confusing. So here at the terminator line, it, the subject begins to fall out of shadow and begins to fall uh, into light and where it begins to fall into light right in here we have a transition and we'll call that um, this is the terminator and this is the transition and trans that transitions into half tones and the half tones then begin to get a little lighter I'm going to make this just a little right here just add a little little of this material right in here and then come in with the light. The half tones begin to get a little lighter as they go towards that surface where the light is directly hitting directly the object. So let's just get that. Alright, so this is sort of rough, but it gives you the idea. Alright, so what happens right in here? Right here right there is the center light. That's the place that is directly in line with the light source. And then that, from there, the thing gradates, the, 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 the image turns away from the light, and then as it turns away from the light, it begins to grow into halftones, 
and begins to get just a little bit darker, but that's nothing shallow. That's nothing shallow, that's still in light. Let's pull that that's a center light up just a little bit here. And let's see if we can work those half tones just a little bit more. So the half tones, in terms of values, and, and this is one thing, one place where we teach, or our teachers often make a, a, a let's say they sort of uh, need to give a little more attention. All right, let's see. Getting a little technical problem here as this material picks up the dark and replaces, but, okay. So where teachers need to give more attention is how do you equate this to the value scale? Now the value scale is just a diagram that has numbers to help us to communicate degrees of light and shadow. Uh, and so what we normally associate the value scale with is that this terminator line is the dark side of the value scale. Beginning at this terminator line, we begin at about value 5, and then it gradually moves on to values 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Now there is a popular value scale that you might have seen. It's called the grayscale and value finder. You can relate this to the demonstration I just gave you here. If you consider this, the not in shadow, these are the half tones. That's equivalent to what I have right in here. The terminator line right in here is the transition, and that transition then goes over into this side of the value scale, which is all in those four shadow areas. So I hope that can I hope you can find that helpful if you can uh, just remember or memorize those parts, just like the parts of your body. You know your hand, you know your arm, you know your shoulders, and knowing those parts helps you to know also what they do. And uh, I might take you to our website, dianemise.com, where you can see up in the menu section something that says free materials. There you can download a free value scale, and you can also download this diagram. Uh, it's called the light and shadow diagram. Just curse all, uh, just hit the free materials button in the um, in the menu, and it will take you right there. And also you'll find on there uh, our full length videos. The, the videos that our virtual students are studying and from and the videos from which this question emerged. Now if you have a quick tip you'd like for me to show you something that you're having problems with, put us a comment right down here and we'll put yours on the schedule. And there's your quick tip.